products. We discover, we invent agriculture via inventing a new brain for ourselves. I think it's very hard for us today, we accept our brain configuration. We think there's only one way to configure a brain, it's our way. So it is an act of immeasurable imagination to think about these animals, which are ourselves in some ways. I want you to think about it a little bit. They have no consciousness as you know it. We can think of them as a chattering ape ridden by a god. And I want you to imagine this, as, if you can. Imagine the ape side. Imagine yourself at your most distracted but most immediate in the world, drifting from thing to thing, from sense impression to sense impression, episode to episode, chatting to your friends. Oh, I want to scratch. Oh, I'm going to chat to you. Oh, what's that over there? Oh, a termite's nest. I'm hungry. Let's eat. Oh, an alarm call. Oh, I'm so hungry. But do you remember, you know, you're just completely scattered. And then for the God side, imagine yourself at your most meditative, at one with the world, knowing the world, because you've been observing it and you've gotten information passed down by your ancestors showing you the world. And that's what you're communicating to that chattering ape side of yourself. The tail end of that mindset can be caught, or is caught, by the very first writings we have. In the lecture that I'll give on Wednesday, it will be a fuller picture, I'll, I'll talk more about the evolution of the bicameral mind and the end of the bicameral mind, which coincides with the start of writing. So the earliest writing gives us little flashes of what that bicameral mind was. So I'm going to leave you with this very old Sumerian proverb, which seems to give us a glimpse of that mind, which is, act promptly, make your God happy. So there we have the lecture.